Hey, this is Vince from Fractal Universe, and you're listening to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience Podcast. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. This is your host, Chris. We got my boy, Jesse. What's up, man? How you doing? Yo, how's it going? Pretty good. And today on episode 49, we have a special guest. We have Vince from Fractal Universe. What's up, man? How you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks. <laughs> Glad to have you on the show, man. Um, great job with the brand new record. I'm going to read this one correctly. Then Passable Horizon out June 25th uh, through Metal Blade Records. How excited are you for this? Yeah, pretty excited. Uh, we've been in the, this record's been in the making for like two years now. So pretty excited for people to finally hear it. Yeah, man, definitely. I know we were excited. We gave it a nice listen through. And uh, I just love all the different elements that you guys incorporate into your music. I mean, it's uh, for anyone like who's aware of the band, this isn't something new. But this record, I feel like you guys took it to another level. I, re I really like the production compared to the last record. And I kind of like what you guys did with the whole concept, like the, the lyrical theme and everything. Yeah, thanks. We try to improve on every possible aspect of the record. You mentioned the production, I think like the, the performance itself, uh, the whole songwriting. I think we managed to improve every single aspect of it and we're pretty happy with how it turned out. Oh, dude, it was beautiful. I mean, the whole concept, like it's very complicated and intricate and everything like that. Uh, how did you guys come up with this idea and like, how did you get the lyrics together? Well, for the lyrics, we work with a close friend of mine who's called Arthur Masso. He's basically a doctor in psychology. So he worked a lot with us on the concept and uh, on that whole thing. So basically, the idea for this record is to talk about the uh, idea of preparedness for death. Basically, how we human beings uh, experience the fact that we are mortal and that our life is finite. And how we manage, despite of that, to give our life meanings. And uh, yeah, we try to, to look at that through various angles like uh, spirituality, art, um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. So That's sick, man. I mean, that's such a metal concept for a record, <laughs> you know, like death. I mean, anything about that is, you know, straight up the metal alley. Yeah, sure. But uh, I think death uh, is pretty complex and uh, has a lot of versatility in it. It's not like a purely negative emotion. Yes. Uh, because obviously, uh, as, as I stated before, we managed to find meaning in the perspective of death awaiting us. So I think that's pretty positive. With, with your research into this and the lyrics and looking into death, did you learn anything about it? Maybe you change your way of looking at death? Or did you already have an idea going into this record what you kind of wanted to say about it? Well, I, I think the, the point of this record is not like to give uh, definitive answers to yeah. anything because we cannot, but uh, it's to have different perspectives on that. And uh, definitely, uh, I think our perspectives changed also because of what happened during this uh, whole last year and the pandemic and stuff. So yeah, that puts, I think, everything into perspective here. Yeah, basically, like a lot of people like thinking about changing jobs and moving because of the way like the pandemic, some people stayed home, some people realize like maybe their job isn't what they want to do. And then also you got like other religious aspects, like some people believe in re reincarnation. Some people believe in nothing after. So it kind of gives them like different reactions to when loved ones or somebody dies. It's very interesting. I like that. Yeah, so Speaking about the pandemic as well. I mean, how, how much did this affect the record? The whole, I mean, we were shut down for almost over half a year now, a year and a half right now. So. <laughs> half a year right you know a year and a half so how uh, you're you're from france right now right? i mean you're calling in from france right now right yeah that's yeah correct. so how was it there and how did that affect everything well actually yeah it, we, we were hit pretty bad by the pandemic as well um, we have been on lockdown uh, since march 2020 uh, but we were lucky enough to uh, to complete our whole european tour right before the pandemic uh, started so that was pretty lucky and as for the record um we weren't affected that much in the in the process of making it because we work a lot remotely and we had already finished like the composition process and everything uh, before the whole pandemic hit so uh, we managed to to finish like um the, the last bunch of pre-production stuff right before 
and uh, yeah, then we worked remotely, uh, recorded at every everyone's homes, and uh, so everything went pretty smoothly, and we managed to be very productive despite all of that happening. I think. Awesome. I read uh, I read uh, that you guys never like everyone like recorded their parts at their homes. Is this the first time everybody did that, or or is this a common thing? Everybody just sends in all their ideas and for the record with the uh, home recording. Uh, well, it was a common thing for all the stringed instruments and vocals. But before that, uh, we used to track drums in like um, other recording studios. But what yeah. changed for this record is now that uh, Clément Ardrama has his own professional recording studio at home, which nice. is called Boundaries Productions. So this obviously changes things and makes it a lot easier because we can take as much time as we need for the drums. And that's, I think, a huge difference. Yeah, especially because that's probably the most exp uh, expensive part to record if you're renting out a oh, studio yeah. and everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, you do a lot of things in the band, like you, you vocals, uh, you do guitar, and now this is like your first time actually doing the sax work too, right? Yeah, correct. Actually, it's, yeah. I'm pretty new to the instrument. Uh, I've only been playing it for like uh, one year and a half, but uh, I was pretty excited to, to add it on the record. Yeah, see that that blew my mind. I, like the way I heard you playing, I thought you were like a seasoned person who did this as like you know a, like a teen back in like middle school or something like that. You know. Well, actually, yeah, I've always wanted to learn the instrument, but never really got through with it. And uh, actually, I had more time. Um, like two years ago, I decided to uh, to consider it, and uh, I'm really happy with uh, with it. I, I'm really having a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, we quickly realized that we could add this to the band and. Uh, yeah, so pretty excited. It's funny too. I feel like sax is not usually an instrument that you, uh, you're like, I'm going to put this in a metal song, you know, like a sax kind of thing. It's kind of like it has to work right, you know, and I feel like I, you guys pulled it off as well. I know there's other bands too, like Rivers and Nile, they do it well as, uh, as well too. So what kind of inspired you guys? What, what made you think this was going to work? Well, first of all, we did it on previous works already, but these were guests. We had uh, Jorgen Munkeby from Shining, mm -hmm. for example, playing yep. a solo. And uh, at first, for this record, we thought like, yeah, it would be cool to have a guest on the record and maybe something that is not like a guitar solo or, or something. So we we had a look around and uh, we, we just asked him and he did an amazing job, I think, on the song. And that made me realize the whole potential of having the saxophone in the band actually because yeah we were really blown away by his contribution and i think the saxophone as a whole is really a metal sounding instrument because you can make it sound really really heavy and, uh, and aggressive if you want to oh yeah and uh i think it complements the the sound of a distorted guitar pretty well well specifically the single where you had basically the trade-off sax solo to guitar solo that was pretty dope with looking at that like for future when recording that were you looking at like live shows are you looking at like knowing you're prepared or you're a little nervous to maybe pull that out live as the person doing it or are you guys going to play it over like uh, a backing track of some sort uh, no i'm definitely going to play all of the saxophone oh, there parts, we go. which is going to oh, be exciting <laughs> um right now i'm still i'm getting confident with that we had a lot of like rehearsals on stage where i have to switch the instruments and everything and yeah it, it seems to roll pretty smoothly Nice. I have my first live show uh, with this uh, new instrument and the new record in a couple of weeks, and I'm pretty excited about how this is going to turn out. But uh, yeah, obviously for the songs, sometimes we have to do a little rearrangement, like add a little section here and there, because I just need a little bit of time to grab the saxophone and then grab my guitar back. So little arrangements here and there, but uh, overall they work really, really well, I think. Oh, that's awesome yeah that's like that's like one thing it's like almost like you can do you ever think about doing like that way like when they do acoustic guitars they have them just on a stand so you can just like quickly like play them and then walk away like something <laughs> cool like that just the sax comes out everyone cheers <laughs> like, yeah, here it comes. i have it on the stand uh, on the back of the stage so i have to walk all the way back and then oh, uh, get to the front <laughs> yeah. Yeah. be great someone's right there's no it issues out. it should be working very fast and fine i think i think it'd be great if you're just like out there like sex well you just grab your hand and someone tosses it and you just go <laughs> like, how, what's up how perfect would that be you know <laughs> just fucking crush it what's up i just do this every day i don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> i just got like a tenacious d moment right there like give it to me like jack black hit but. me with it <laughs> yeah it's like how did it open up your musical like 
you know, you're a very musical band. You guys are all very proficient in your instruments. Did learning the sax open up your guitar playing and singing? Like you having to learn a completely different version of music. You kind of already familiar with it, but then maybe learn more theory that you didn't know or any kind of way music might work off of each other. Um, that's sad to say. I think uh, it's helped me. Uh, I think vocals and saxophone are really complementary in the way that you need the same breathing technique, the same breath support and everything. And so by learning the saxophone, I, I think I got also better at singing because, yeah, as I said, the same techniques involved and, uh, and it was really beneficial, I think, for, for my singing as well. As for the rest, uh, what I found very interesting at the moment is to try and replicate the same phrases I would play, for example, on guitar, on the saxophone and the other way around, because obviously it's a different way of thinking, yeah. the instrument. So you have different uh, uh, automatic licks that come to you. And it's interesting to, to play them on the other instrument. And that's something that I'm really looking into at the moment. That's interesting you said that, because like, I, you know, not very good, but I play drums and I know I get caught in ruts. Like you have like your go-to licks, right? You're like when you just mm. sit down at your guitar, you just play, you always fall into trying to play that on the sack did that uproot any of your like go-to like did it maybe open you up to experiment more because you had to figure out these different phrases on both guitar and sax at the same time yeah i think so because when you are thinking on the sax for example you have to think about breathing yeah. something you don't have to to think about when you're playing a guitar lick or, or something so that i think can really open up your your guitar playing sound by thinking more in terms of musical phrases rather than uh, never taking a break for example something you really have to do on the saxophone and i think in that way yeah it's it's really really interesting that's awesome i'm gonna play the sax chris <laughs> i'm doing no. it <laughs> i think oh, if i of... play drums and sax i think i get killed in my neighborhood they're like you just play every loud instrument can you play something <laughs> silent <laughs> just like can you play, please the recorder yeah, this is well, why i don't I know if a... that's silent yeah, this is why I have a vocal and saxophone booth there you uh, go. in my place here, so I can be loud without annoying the neighbors too much. Obviously, they still hear something, but uh, yeah. less. Just six in the morning. You're like, come on, <laughs> dude. Come on. So this is where everything was recorded for the album, or is this just like a different type of studio? Uh, yeah, this is my place. This is where I tracked um, guitars, vocals, and saxophone for the record, basically. Man. There we go. The, the the studio right there. I love it. So a big being a front man and being like, you know, people don't usually like being in the spotlight. You know, sometimes they have fear of speaking, like public speaking and stuff like that. And like becoming a vocalist is sometimes hard, even if you love singing, being a front man in a band could be a lot of pressure. Did you ever feel like that when you were starting the band and you, you know, became the front man? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, actually, I'm a very shy person, very introvert. And so I think uh, over the years, uh, I think music helped me a lot to, uh, to, 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 to come over that. And uh, I think it still does. And I'm getting more and more confident with it. And uh, it helps me also in life in general, I think. But uh, yeah, obviously, it's still sometimes a little bit frightening, especially now when we are going to play new songs on stage. Every time we, we bring a new live show on the stage, you have always that little fear inside of you. Will I be good enough for that? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still loving this actually i love challenging myself and everything so yeah pretty pretty excited to bring another challenge with the saxophone now so let's see how that turns out well i'm glad that you're getting confident because you keep adding shit to your repertoire <laughs> next thing you know yeah, you're gonna yeah. pull a keyboard out you're just like dude i gotta make this harder and harder <laughs> <laughs> do it that's all at the same time man that's awesome though especially like in a, in a genre as hard as yours like progressive like kind of death metal you know, maybe it's a maybe there's a better genre. Term. I don't know. You guys fucking shred. Like I'm just sitting there listening on the bus ride home from work. I'm like, Jesus, dude. Like <laughs> it's exhausting. And then you just add saxophone on top, and you guys are shredding that too. Because I can understand if you just learn sax or just learn instrument, taking it slow, right? You have like long held out, very like melodic phrases, and now nah, you're just in there, just going. It was like, did, was there like a? Did you just jump like both feet into that, or did you start off very slow, or did you try to replicate your guitar playing on saxophone like right away when you started playing? And I started very slow. I started. It was a lot of fun, like uh, picking up a new instrument yeah. when you're already like a confident musician. Besides that, mm -hmm. so you you don't start from scratch, obviously. But uh, I really took my time and had fun, like playing simple melodies or whatever. Uh, getting used to the instrument, but uh, I think then, as I said, you don't start from scratch. So there are a lot of things you don't have to learn. I don't have to learn. Uh, I don't have to train my ears because they are already 
uh, they were already trained. I don't have to learn music theory and all of that. So uh, obviously you can come up with phrases and come up with a decent technique and, uh, and everything much faster than a complete beginner on, in music, I think. Yeah, because that's very interesting. I always feel bad for like when uh, I think we interviewed, I think it was this was the singer Kearns. Somebody it was a singer who learned guitar and they're in a very technical band. I was like, it kind of sucks to learn an instrument in a technical band because you can't just jump in. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, with a small lick, like I can't just learn a guitar and play a power chord in a progressive death metal band. Like I just can't add a lick. You got to like <laughs> you got to be ready to shred. He's like, oh, my God, I got, I got like a t- couple of years to get to the level where I can actually add to my band. Did you feel that pressure or were you just like, nah, I got this because I'm already good at guitar singing Um, and screaming? Well, actually, in the beginning, I was starting out the instrument mainly for myself, like having fun at home. And then, yeah, I really loved it and I spent a lot of time practicing it. And then quickly, it became like a goal incorporating it into the band. And uh, I, I started writing out like some little solos that i wasn't able to play at first i just uh, had the idea so i was able to play like the single licks apart from each other but not the whole solo and then then i practiced in order to be able to do that and then i i got more ideas and everything kind of fell together like that oh man that's awesome i gotta take some of those ideas for my own practicing chris get get the guitar we're we getting go. better <laughs> <laughs> this guy can learn three things we can learn one yeah i had to pick up my one instrument <laughs> uh i mean this you have like at least 12 tracks on this record um and i'm always curious i always ask this question too with artists sometimes when you guys are working on songs it could be so complicated just not work and then you kind of like leave it and you come back to it maybe months later or even a year later and then you finally finish it for this record do any of those songs almost not get finished uh i'm i don't know not particularly because uh to me writing is always a process that spans over quite a long period of time like a few months or even more so uh there aren't that took particularly long i think they all took their time and sometimes i like to to leave like a, a month or two between listening to the songs and maybe come back with a fresh mind on it so that's kind of part of the natural that's kind of the natural process for me so what, what would you say is the average time span for a Fractal Universe song? That's really hard to say. Uh, <laughs> I think the, 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 once I have a good first idea, everything develops quite quickly into a full song. But then it's all the little details, maybe arranging the song into a little bit differently or something that can take a, a few months. And again, I don't like to, to rush things. I always yeah. like to, to, to take some time. So that's really hard to answer. I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> I, I like asking those questions because I know like some bands are like, I could just pump out 30 songs right now, like Devil Driver. He's like, I have two albums ready to go. I just wrote three more songs this morning and it was like it was like 6 a.m. <laughs> now, like Dez is ready. He's like, I got lyrics, I got beats, I got riffs, like I'm ready to go. And then there's bands, you know, like, oh, no, man, we had the whole pandemic and we came up with two songs. It's like, what, what's going on here? So it's always <laughs> it's always really cool to find out what the process is for each band because everyone is so different. Yeah. Well, actually, I want to ask because of the pandemic, I, it obviously affected all of us negatively, some more than others. But with bands, did you did the pandemic help? Well, Because you said you had it all done. Did you add any ideas or did you like did it give you the comfort of taking the time to record it? Because you knew it was probably not going to go away anytime soon. Yeah, well, I think the saxophone may kind of be part of that because uh when i said everything was finished this was like except for some vocal harmonies or whatever and for the guitar and sax solos so actually yeah what we did during the the the, the first month of lockdown was trying out different stuff with solos i, I tried to place the saxophone on different uh, places on the record we kept some we didn't keep some others so maybe yeah maybe the pandemic helped in that way to 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 give me more time and, and confidence and also i think for the whole recording process um i i really took my time with the vocals i really took the time to redo all of the takes uh if if they needed to to layer as many vocals as needed um because yeah there was no clear deadline for that so that that gave us a lot of freedom i think in that especially because i think the only expense you really have is is, is did you guys have a producer like a higher producer or was it just all within band since you guys all have your own recording spots uh no we had a basically a producer that mixed and mastered the record but the, all the tracking we did by ourselves uh, i think yeah. no the producer was there for the drum trackings but that's it basically 
yeah so you guys just had free yeah. it was just free money just all day it's like <laughs> as long as i can pay for my house or my apartment or whatever yeah. i'm good all right that's awesome who was the producer uh he's called flavian morel basically he's uh the producer of all our records so far and uh yeah i think we have really built a a good working relationship he now understands the band really good and uh, it's also very good because he lives close to where we are so oh, we perfect. are able to attend the mixing uh, sessions and everything which i oh, think is awesome. great especially for music with as many layers as ours oh yeah, yeah definitely yeah and it's also well i wanted to it's kind of going back a little bit but i read that also a lot of these ideas were you had some of these ideas for some of these songs before your last record correct when you were recording your last record and you guys brought it to this record why was that is it because they just weren't finished or you were just starting them as the record was being finished the yeah. second record yeah we started them as the second record was finished and uh that 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 um that is what i said before like uh, i take my time for writing yeah <laughs> and uh usually i think when when the record is is finished you have spent so much time on the on the writing on the rehearsing on the recording on the mixing and everything that you just need to 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 move, move on to something else and that's yeah. usually a good time for me to start gathering new ideas and that's what we did with rhizomes well with after rhizomes starting to write for the impossible horizon Man, you guys got it all really figured out because a lot of people, especially if you have like all the control at your fingertips, like I know me, I made a few videos here and there, like things with the podcast. I'm like, we don't have a deadline. Let me redo this part. And you can kind of get yeah. lost in that loop where you have, if you have all the control, you probably listen to your voice and go, I think I could do it better. <laughs> I have it in my house. And you're like, it's kind of good that you guys have that mentality of it's done. See you later. We'll make better songs later. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, well, there's always, I think, this push to do to do it better. But uh, I think at what point you have to, to, to just call it quits. So, yeah. so you, have, you can, uh, yeah. <laughs> at one point, you, you cannot improve it or it's like very, very minimal. So yeah, then it's a matter of knowing if it's worth the time or, or, or whatever. Absolutely. Because I've seen a lot of shredded ideas because of that. They're like, well, he went back a thousand times and now it's not even a thing anymore because it's yeah. like you overthink it. That's really awesome. Because I know if I had your spot, I probably would never release an album. <laughs> I'd be like, you know, I'm going to, It's it can get better. And it's like, Jesse, he's homeless now. He ran out of money. All he did was focus on this album. That's not coming out anymore. One so, song. <laughs> yeah, it's half a song. It's actually you got one verse. It's wild. But uh, <laughs> Well, you guys actually are friends with fellow um, Frenchman Gojira. Uh, you guys worked to Christian, right? The guitarist. Yeah, actually, we met him for that occasion. What we did is uh, three days of uh, stage rehearsal, uh, working on the new show. And he was there to, to basically coach us, to give us advices, uh, because obviously he has a lot of advices to give, given his amazing career. Oh, yeah. And uh, so he helped us, like, build the show and, um, yeah, give a lot of tiny advices, but that would make, I think, a huge difference in the sum of it. Did, it's kind of, man, that's kind of awesome i didn't know about that just like such a big band giving back to like local yeah. like french bands that's awesome yeah and ac actually he was really enthusiastic about it and i think yeah we we had the luck of of this whole pandemic because i think he was <laughs> kind of bored and uh so, so he was pretty excited to to come for three days of live music and uh, and everything and uh yeah i think he, he he got a lot out of it himself do you think you guys would ever like team up on a track, maybe their song, your song, or just a new project or anything like that? Well, that would definitely be cool, but uh, who knows? <laughs> maybe that will happen. Maybe in the future. <laughs> well, we have a, a new segment on the show, or not a new segment, but something that we like to do on the show. It's called Get to Know the Band, and we're going to get to know Fractal Universe. We're going to ask you a series of questions, and you just let us know which member of the band best fits the bill so the first question up is who is the funny guy in the band who makes everyone laugh Oof, <laughs> that's a tough one hard to say i think all of us there's not one that would stand out i think there we go what makes you guys funny do you like quote movies or anything like that witty or do you guys play pranks on each other and jokes yeah kind of or we also listen like to listen to a lot of very very bad music <laughs> and uh, actually, one thing we love to do in uh, when we are on tour, like in, in the van or something, is everybody puts on the, the worst song he knows. <laughs> it could be any any genre. And uh, yeah, we love that. That's awesome. 
somebody just somewhere getting trashed somewhere in France <laughs> by an entire band of Fractal Universe. You're like, dude, <laughs> I feel it, man. Some hurts. Some something's hacking me. <laughs> uh, question number two: Who's the band member that is always hungry? Who likes to go out and eat? Uh, Hugo, the guitar player, definitely. And does he pull you guys along when you don't want to? Like, hey guys, I'm going to eat. Come on, come with me. Like, you know, uh, like I, there's always that person that uses the the like eating as like a social gathering. Yeah, I think he's also the guy that finishes everything. That maybe <laughs> has been uh, like on the bottom of the of the van for like a week or so, or he finishes oh everyone's God. plate at the catering, Ooh. and he has a like a steel stomach. It's 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 incredible. Man, man. <laughs> he just eats raw meat. It doesn't affect him. It's weird. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, uh, who's the guy, Who's the band member most likely found sleeping who likes to take a lot of naps? Uh, Clément, the drummer. I'm always amazed he manages to sleep in the van like with his head hanging down like that. Jeez. It's kind of crazy. He wakes up <laughs> with incredible neck pain and a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Not even. That's, why, uh, that's what I don't get. <laughs> yeah. He's just a very healthy person. He just, just sits up like a vampire. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <doing that? laughs> it's crazy how people can sleep like that because like i feel like i sleep on my side wrong and my my shoulder is like fucked for the whole day yeah. like, like it just i can't move it i have to crank it out and stuff like that and like some guy be slumping over his chair and he's like wake up he's like good as new <laughs> getting old dude that's why exactly right uh question number what are we on four <laughs> who's the mom and dad in the group who kind of like acts as the parents of the group uh, Valentin, the bass player, he's uh, the oldest of the band. He's also the one that doesn't drink, so he's uh, okay. the driver on rough nights. And yeah, oh, there definitely go. him. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, dude. Those drives can be wild. I've heard crazy stories like Black Eye Initiate was telling me about their trek all the way through Canada and stuff like that. Do you have any fun stories about those long drives? Yeah, one time we uh, we finished our tour, uh, I think in Lithuania, which is which was a 25 hours drive back home to France on the next day. And obviously all three of us got drunk on that night. And so <laughs> he, and we had to leave at like 7 a.m. the next morning and Valentin had to drive for the six first hours on his own, I think. And yeah, we were really sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, usually there's like a buddy system too. Like one person tries to keep the other person awake, the driver awake in case like he starts nodding off. Yeah, that but... didn't work on, on, on that. <laughs> <laughs> But usually, yeah, say. usually we do say. that. Usually we're more serious. <laughs> he was a team of one because we were yeah. asleep. <laughs> Jeez. Um, yeah. Okay, and final one for the get to know the band. Uh, who's the most energetic in the band? Who has the most energy? Uh, maybe Clément as well, the drummer. Uh, because he's, uh, yeah, like always, uh, always 100%, I think, during the re rehearsal and everything. So, yeah, we'd go for him. He's the guy who's always ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> like throw me in there, coach. <laughs> Get me in. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like we, we should pull it from all the last podcasts. I feel like the drummers are always the ones sleeping. I feel like yeah. we always get that. And I wonder if it's just like it's that. They're just freaking the fuck out on behind the kit and then they just pass out if they lift <laughs> all their crappy equipment in. Yeah. So I was like, just moving a couple of drums, it's wild. You were like literally bring it down to the minimal and you're like still making seven trips. You're like, yeah. I have three things. How am I going up and down these stairs so much? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Yeah, it's oh. funny. I, I realized that Clément is the one taking naps, but he's also the one being very energetic. So maybe that is connected. Like, he takes a nap and then he's ready to go again. <laughs> he just hibernates. <laughs> he just, <laughs> he just... He's like a, like a cell phone. He just needs to recharge, right? Fully fast charging oh, right dude. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, a... So we, ha we have another segment on the show called the Random Silly Question Segment. Uh, we asked you three random questions. I mean, those were pretty random, but we got some better ones for you. <laughs> so question number one is uh, an either or. Uh, would you rather have the taste of mayo in your mouth forever? <laughs> or would you rather wake up every single morning covered head to toe in peanut butter? There you go. <laughs> this is what you came on the podcast for. Uh, <laughs> maybe the peanut butter. <laughs> oh. I now, <laughs> I have long hair. Well, not that long hair, but I have and a beard too. Just getting the peanut butter out of my hair every oh, single yeah. morning. And the thing, and then I was talking to Jesse too. I was like, dude, it might clog your drain every day. Like, you're probably going to have to like find a way not to clog that and stuff like that. New sheets. <laughs> it, yeah. 
It's tough though, because may well, I don't know how you like I hate mayo. So that's why I picked peanut butter because I don't know if I could just wake up with a big frown every day just tasting yeah. something I dislike <laughs> to that level. Do you like mayo at all? No. <laughs> yeah, my man. <laughs> yeah, fuck mayo. Get it out so he's of like, no, I can't deal with that. And maybe you just put gum in your mouth the whole time. So it tastes like trident and mayo. Well, since you're the creator of the question, can you brush your teeth and get rid of it? No, it will always be there. That's bullshit. We're going peanut butter all the way. (laughs) (laughs) Get it out of here. It's a pretty tough choice. So you're sticking with uh, peanut butter? Yeah. Final answer? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Question number two. Uh, What do we got for you? Okay. What specific moment made you feel old? Well, (laughs) tough question. I think, yeah. Now the pandemic, realizing that one year and a half has passed. And we have basically <laughs> done nothing in our lives. <laughs> Not nothing, but uh, yeah, you mean like one year and a half is gone. I'm 26 now. I was 24 when the pandemic started. And uh, wow. Damn. Yeah. It's funny when you put it like that. Yeah. Now, look, for me, it was when um, you realize that people that were born in the year 2000 are illegal to drink. Well, in America, you're legal to drink at 21 now. And that kind of blew my mind because I always feel like 2000. Oh, that was like 10 years ago or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, and now it's a full twenty-one. I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> wow. Yeah, and another thing maybe is when you are like uh, watching sports and you realize that uh, most of the people now on the field are like uh, your age or younger than you when they used to be like double your age or something. Yeah. So. Actually, Dude. I found that funny. Like my age, I'm twenty-eight. They're like, "Oh, they're in their they're veteran. They're veterans in hockey. <laughs> you know, yeah. their prime their prime <laughs> age." And I was like, "Wow, I'm a veteran. Twenty-eight. There we go." <laughs> well, that's why I used to hate Born of Osiris when I was like in high school. Like right out of high school, they got signed and they were like popping off. And I was like, God damn it. Now I'm at the age where everybody is like the average age of succeeding. So it's like, oh, this new artist, like Chris said, this uh, this uh, a professional athlete. It's like, fuck, like I'm just working at an office right now. I got to figure this out. Where's my first million? <laughs> Talking to Hammerhead made me feel old, too. Yeah. Shout well, out to Hammerhead. <laughs> well, they discovered Mastodon on Mother. Like, like, what was it? Uh, what t- Show yourself. Yeah, I was like, yeah. What? I don't know. Are you a big fan of Mastodon? No, no. It was show yourself. Really? Yeah. Vince, are you a fan of Mastodon? I don't know the band that well, to be honest. I saw them live and they were great. My man. Well, show yourself is a very new song. And, you know, we like got into them like in 2008. And this song came out maybe four years ago. And (laughs) we interviewed these young men and they were like, yeah, show yourself is where we discovered them. We're like, are you kidding me? Like yeah. they've been around for so long. It's like you forget, like when people are that young, they're just like, yeah, I just discovered this thing that's been around for 30 years. So you're like, holy shit. Yeah, it's it's interesting when you think about that. No matter how long a band's been around, when when they put out a new album, they're probably making new fans. Like, not probably, they are making new fans. It might not be a lot, but like I bet you Metallica puts out a new record, they're gonna make new fans that are like, you know, 12 years old or something like that. It blows yeah. my mind. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. You know what, man? I, when I got called old, it was on a video game. Some kid made a reference, and I was like, man, that's like, or I made a reference. He's like, hey, man, that's an old reference. That's from my generation. I was like, well, when were you born? He's like, 2004. And I was like, holy shit. He's like, why? When were you born? I was like, 1994. He's like, bro, you're old. I was like, fuck <laughs> you, kids. I was like 23 at the time. I was like, get out of here. I was like, I'm not that old. You guys suck. Kids uh, well, en- enough of being old. <laughs> uh, question number three. Yeah, What's something that this one's kind of tough. This one is going to put you on the spot, Vince. So get ready. What's something that hasn't been invented that should have been by now? Hmm. Change the world, Vince. Yeah, I think like something, <laughs> <laughs> something <laughs> avoiding us to do like 22 hours drives, something to, to teleport teleportation, teleportation. One, one place to the next with all your gear and everything. That would be amazing. Dude, I don't know if it's me being lazy, but you know how many times I thought about that? I'm like, when is this going to happen? <laughs> I just need this in my life. I don't know if you're a fan of Dragon Ball Z, but when like Goku like we're teleport when you're doing that, Instant I'm transmission. Like, oh. yeah. Oh my God. That's amazing. I'm a last minute lever too. That's like my dream. Just like, all right. It's time, like five seconds before you're supposed to be at work. Got it. See you there. It's He's like, going oh. to different planets and everything. Oh, dude. Man, Vince, please invent teleportation. I don't know how smart you actually are, but <laughs> you got a lab oh. back there. <laughs> yeah, we want we want it. 
if you could break down a human body and re uh, put it back together somewhere hundreds of miles away, please, in an instant. Thank you. Um, so that was the random silly question segment. Thank you for participating in that. And um, yeah, before we let you go, is there anything else that you want to talk about? Do you have an upcoming tour or anything else you want to plug? Uh, in terms of shows for now, things are starting slowly. We're playing in France mostly. Uh, but one of our big goals with this record is to make it to North America. So hopefully that will happen at one point because we, are, we know we have a lot of followers up there. Uh -huh, Actually, yeah. uh, um, I think over 50% of our fan base is in the US and Canada. So nice. that would be amazing to finally be able to meet them. Yeah, get over here before I run out of money. All these shows are getting announced. I'm, I'm yeah, broke. That, I'm out <laughs> of money. <laughs> I'm going to sell, I'm have to sell my every time I die flag. I mean, just, I can't, <laughs> I'm poor now. <laughs> now. See, now you just need a fractal universe flag right there. Yeah. Can I get one to replace the flag I'm about to sell to get a, yet another <laughs> ticket? <laughs> that was awesome. Jesse, you have anything else you would like to ask? Uh, no, nothing. It was a pleasure talking to you, man. You were really awesome. And the record's dope. And honestly, I just want to say your progress is amazing. Like I listened to like basically your whole discography and just like your guys' first uh, EP, like, just that to the second album is wild. Like I'm just like the growth is insane. It, like the EP came out in 2017, was it? Uh, 15. 15. Yeah, that's fucking wild. Six years, and you already learned another instrument in the process. Yeah, really. You know, I can't wait to listen to all your guys' new music. See you guys live. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much. Shout out to the album one more time. Then Passable Horizon out June 25th. Metal Blade Record. Vince, it was a pleasure, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure was Thanks mine. So much. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. Your host, Chris. We got Jesse. What's up, dog? Yeah, what's up, dog? Woo -woo! Episode 49, we had Vince, the saxophonist, the guitarist, the front man of Fractal Universe. Awesome, dude. Let's put out that album title right now. It's going to come up on screen. The Impassable Horizon, out June 25th, Metal Blade Records. Now, probably when this comes out, it'll be out. No, okay, I don't know when this is dropping. A Thursday because that's when the podcast always drops. But yeah, Vince was awesome. It's crazy how he learned a brand new instrument. Just as like, ah, I'm interested in this. I want to learn it. I've been interested in guitar for 10 years, and I played like three songs. Well, there's a reason we have a podcast, and he's in a band. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shout out to Metal Blade for getting another band on their roster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's really interesting, especially because uh, I didn't want to get too crazy with it, but like when you think about it's one thing learning an instrument, but it's another thing getting confident enough to bring it into your craft and or something that you're going to be doing in front of people. So like, like a, uh, like a, like a version of that would be like MMA. They say when like MMA fighters learn a move, a lot of them aren't confident enough to use it. So like they might learn a move, but like two years later, they actually might use it in an actual fight. You know, it's like a lot of things. That's why John Jones was said to be so good because he would be confident enough to just learn something. And then like the next fight, he would just be free enough to try it. But that's why he was so good. A lot of people are usually in their own heads. I, even I, like the few times I did uh, drum offs, like things I was working on before the drum off, I didn't want to do because I'm like, this might not work. <laughs> like I might just drop my stick. This might suck. Like I'm just not comfortable enough to do this in front of people because you're afraid you're going to mess up. And this dude's like, whatever, tech death band like tech prog band whatever death metal i don't even know what genres are anymore it's really <laughs> hard music that's all i know and he's like i'll saxophone solo over these crazy riffs that's fucking wild does guitar center still do their drum offs no they stopped that years ago okay i remember you going and stuff and then you stopped or whatever well no, like i, I last too? last year i did uh the last year that was done i did judging because apparently no one wanted to judge so the guy who sold me my first drum set was like hey you want to judge and i'm like Sure, I guess. Yeah, okay. So you ruined someone's dream. Oh, no. There was some guys I definitely, in my head, I was shitting all over. Because I don't mind it. See, the thing I hate about drum solos, especially if you're not fucking amazing, is like people in their head, like I have the inverse problem. I'm too afraid to do chops. And that's what always held me back. And other people are way too confident to do chops. Like they're nowhere near good enough to do chops. And they're like, let's play a second of a beat a bar and a half and then they just rip and they're not that good <laughs> where there's like you know it's like when they there was a few guys who had really good groove and then they would they would just like a bar and a half and they would rip it and you're like and like dude like i think i like if it wasn't so loud i was like 
no, what? And then there's this one guy who just showed everyone how it's done. He played amazing amounts of groove and amazing amounts of fills, and he was good at all of it. And that's why I was like, well. How he, far do you go? I don't know, but he won the rounds I was judging. You didn't follow through? Uh, I don't think I was invited because it's a different <laughs> story. Yeah. <laughs> I fuck that guy. Fuck that judge. Yeah, especially when we did our intros as judges. I didn't know what to write. You know me. Like, I shit all over myself anyways. But I really have no fucking – accolades to like here's i'm gonna judge you like you said on your dreams it's like who are you well i play drums okay <laughs> you're like are you a teacher it's like i played i was in the margin band and i played two talent shows do you better impress me <laughs> i remember andy he threw in. it's like yeah he's a, a student of a youtube, uh, <laughs> student of YouTube. Yeah, of youtube and i was like Oh my god! <laughs> That's like, Andy, fun, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, there was a, yeah. there was one really good guy. Then, like I said, everybody uh, shout out to Andy. Like, Andy, what's up? Um, yeah, but that's uh, uh Schwiz. His band is like funk band. Schwiz. Uh, yeah, imagine they just blow up off of that. Our podcast numbers don't do better, but Schwiz does way better somehow. Schwiz. Has no, a fun but name. like that's what I mean. There's like too many comp. Like people are way too confident or underconfident, and he Vince seemed like he just had the right mental of everything. Like. Oh yeah, pretty wild. Like it makes sense how good there he's as good a, uh, as he is on everything. I mean, just looking at the record, the Impassable Horizon, dropping it again. Um, I don't know. I was really blown away, not blown away, but like I don't know. I really, really like number six, the Withering Snowdrops. I think that song's really, really well done. So uh, yeah, no shout out to them. Shout out to the whole band. And I kind of like how we found another drummer that likes to sleep a lot. <laughs> it seems to like to be all of them, dude. And I also fumble fucked my question, which is pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. I uh I blacked out during some of my questions, so I hope they went all right. <laughs> I started them and in my head I'm like, I don't know where this is going. Did you have a Michael Scott moment? Sometimes I start a sentence. Yeah, I didn't know where I was going. I had the idea and then I kind of went like, okay, you said some words there, and I don't know where you're going with it now. So I hope you get to where you're going. And I was like, <laughs> fuck. And then I ended it confident. I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I yeah. hope it makes sense. The worst is when you have the like, question. Well, the worst is when you have the question in your head, and then you're saying, and you're like, "Well, I could probably say this better." And then you're thinking about how you're saying it better, but then you're not focusing on the question you're saying. Yeah. Also, I don't want to look at it over here. So, anyways, how do you feel about what you're doing? And it's just like, can you look? Wait, at you me? didn't want to be like, "Hey, nice to have you on, Vince." <laughs> well, sometimes you gotta remember. That's the best. I forgot uh, who we were interviewing, but we just was like. They didn't. Know. They they didn't notice. Uh, great times. Back I should turn. Out. I should turn off my video next time. Hey man, nice to uh. <laughs> Good guy, cheese. So anyway, up. yeah, Vince, what's up? It's like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, my camera cut out. Hey, uh, what's up, Gabrielle? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Why does that keep happening every time you say names? Whatever, well, guys. Guess what happened here? <laughs> guess what happened with our boy Jesse? He finally followed through. He put up a drunk. Oh cover. yeah. Yeah. Meet the rest. Lamb yeah. God. Yeah. Ring. I don't know his username, but Jordan. So Organ Grinder. Out. Something numbers. Yeah. So shout out to that. Yeah. No, it's doing fantastic since I don't post and my algorithm sucks. But yeah, Watch it right I now. Did it. Watch it. Yeah. It's right there, guys. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, also, definitely, if you anybody out there plans on doing an instrument cover of anything, don't ask to team up with anybody as your first, especially if you're the one editing. Because uh, let me tell you, reaction videos are not hard to edit. And then I went from one stream of video to about five to six streams of video that I had to cut between. And I freaked out a little bit. I had to drink some Diet Coke to calm my nerves. And I got it done. But Jesus Christ, it was terrifying. Thank God my friend let me borrow Premiere. Because uh, Shot Cut was not cutting it. That program sucks. And there's oh, a reason now they're never going to be a sponsor, Yeah, bro. fuck Shot Cut. I would not take a million dollars from Shot Cut. Whoa. Also, you know what sucks about Shotcut? I'm going off. You use DaVinci anyways. Who gives a fuck about Shotcut? Shotcut sucks. Shotcut's great if you got a fucking you video from your phone that's three minutes long to edit. The second I had to edit more than... Show. Yeah, it sucked. Dude, it was also because I Googled the answers. I'm like, yo, why is this just fall apart? And it was like, well, it could be your Windows. It could be something you downloaded. It could be an update. We don't know because Shotcut's open source software. And it kind of just does it whatever it wants on everyone's computer. And then I was like, maybe it's my computer. Maybe I'll give Shotcut the benefit of the doubt. Borrowed my friend's Premiere, and it worked fucking fantastic. I did everything with it. 
again, five to six things of video, moving it all around, cutting, copy pasting. Other That's stuff what happens like, when you suck. pay for a program. Boom. Like Adobe. Yeah, I didn't pay for it. <laughs> I'm <Boom>. saying, <laughs> I paid for a program. I know, but I was like, shotgun. This is your whole game. It's like, yeah, we are editing software. No, you're not. You're like kind of editing software. It put it in your end, kind of. Jesse rants about shotgun. Well, oh, fuck you, shotgun. Congratulations <laughs> on that nice drum cover. Very well done, sir. And to follow through after the whole pandemic. Yeah, I'm going to become an anime uh, anime intro. I see all these people that cover anime songs, and they're in the millions. So clearly they want to see a fat moron from Jersey cover anime songs. I know I do. No, you don't. But you want to <laughs> see me cover, like, Pantera or something, which I would. No, actually, I'm this close. Yeah, I'm actually Ollie confident proud enough. Of you. Oh There's, yeah, yeah. From man. bleeding, bleeding oh, from dude, I gotta cover that and just be like, "Hey, remember me, motherfucker?" That's his favorite. Remember genre, me, Vinny. motherfucker? Yeah, no, Vinny Paul's gangster. I don't have big enough toms to do that. I got like bitch toms compared to like Vinny Paul has like toms the size of my torso, so it sounds like shotguns going off when he runs down the town. And then mine just sounds like little like burps. You're like, how am I supposed to compare? It's not fair. Yeah, the people always said there's two one. I mean, I love you, Hell Yeah. I can't wait to have you on the show. Oh, someone, was like, someone was like, yeah, there's one good thing about Hell Yeah, and it passed away. I was like, oh. oh my God. I was like, also, was why like, would you say that on the podcast? <laughs> it was a horrible comment. It's on the internet. It wasn't me. I didn't come up with that. I didn't do it. Yeah. So anyway, you just like repeat awful things. It was him. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> you just say a bunch of things. Ah, I didn't say it. But um, anyway, just, we're going to end it there. Yeah. I guess that's a good note. Just cut well, out. I would like to say I wanted to cover a bleed from within and just send it to Ollie, even though we haven't talked in literally since we interviewed him and be like, remember me, motherfucker? It's like, I I'll mean, see you in America. To start chewing and he'll remember you. Yeah. Remember me? Do just like, yeah. He called me on my worst, dude. Yeah, sure, like, uh, yeah. What is it? Uh shaved a uh, crew cut no beard and fucking tank top that was a fu- that was jesse and prime that was a gross jesse oh, we bonded that's, you, that's how you looked i forget basically oh, yeah, I, had, I had like five o'clock shadow and then my crew yeah. cut my hair is at crew cut length and yeah. i had a tank top because really it was hot now. as shit and he was like yeah what the fuck you do <laughs> i was just like i'm hot i don't know what to tell you <laughs> Well, uh, guys, remember the podcast is available. If you're watching on YouTube right now, it's available on most streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple. I would say all of them, all the major major ones. ones. Yeah, all All the the major major ones. If you want audio on YouTube, if you want video, comment and like and let us know what you like and hate about the show, who you want us to interview. And also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And let us know there too. If we suck, if we're good, every (laughs) every comment's great. Fuck our mothers, whatever. Just, you know. I'll take that. It'll hurt my ego a little bit, but you know, you could, t- I'll take a comment and also <laughs> Apple podcast reviews. If you want questions answered podcast reviews, man, give us hell. We'll take a bad review, but you know, try five stars. We'll, we'll take, take five all. stars, five stars. And you get read on the podcast. How about that? We'll gain the system. Like everybody else, you leave us a bad review. Go fuck yourself. There we go. Boom. I'll read the good ones. Jesse read the bad ones. Yeah. Only they're about <laughs> me though. Cause I'm narcissistic. So what's up you fat ginger idiot. <laughs> just, there, mm, just suck my lip bitch all right guys well <laughs> thank you for tuning in and as always keep it real